Hello and welcome again to another episode of Seed as we welcome uh, as we just get to know the different seeds in our life and remember this is not the maize seed it is not the guava seed or any other kind of seed you know one of my best fruits the the mango seed but it is the seed of life and the lessons that come with it and so we have another time to just get to listen to Ricky's story and I hope that it is still just moving and uh, you are relating together with it and so yeah let's continue with this so Ricky is introduced after the burial of Ricky's mom and dad uh, who died just like one year apart Ricky is introduced to uh, this particular family the first one is the family from the mom's side who all of them most of them actually uh, they were involved in this business of selling illicit brew uh, those that's the kind of alcohol that is selling it, it is actually not legal anywhere and then also Ricky necessarily also does not understand uh, the other side of the family he has never met any one of them except his dad and so yes life continues and he's there remember the time that they buried the dad the only clothes Ricky remained with on his body were the clothes uh, were the only clothes that he had no one else uh, had given him anything he had never received a birthday clue or a Christmas gift or any other kind of gift apart possibly from the gift of parents and uh, now people around him and so he didn't really know what to do he felt like an outcast in this family he didn't really know should he also join in selling the illicit brew he felt so bad on his heart in his heart just seeing other men coming and you know their health just going down the drain their wives coming and he started seeing the same kind of story that was happening with his mom and dad in other people's lives and he hated it and even this brought about more anger and he didn't know what to do so he continued he was like so where am i going where am i going with this life he didn't have enough food to eat no clothes on his body apart from the oversized clothes from his ankles and yes didn't know where else to go to so he decided to run away from home where to the only place where he found peace and solace and that is the church where did he sleep he expressed to me he used to sleep on the pulpit and with the draping that fell from the roof all the way down he used to cover himself with. and his kind of food was not everyday meal you know breakfast uh, lunch and dinner some, I know some will be like, oh, we actually even have dessert. <laughs> but no, his meal was whatsoever rubbish that people accumulated from their homes and sent it to one of the biggest dumping sites in East Africa, down where he used to live. And they used to go there and just get the daily meals whatsoever remained if anyone decided I'm not eating this piece of chicken because it smells filthy man that's the first chicken Ricky will eat <laughs> together with some of his friends I mean he got some friends who associated with him on that so that became his life he would go down to the dumping site and in the evening come back sleep and pray and cry wake up in the morning see children going back to school then go back to the dumping site take a shower with the pipes that were broken 
find something to eat, do whatsoever is necessary in living everyday life, and then go back to the church, cry, sleep. That became his life. And so, as tough as it can be, I remember when he expressed it. He didn't, he failed now to know how to express himself to God. He started writing letters and putting them on the bottles and throw them in the Nairobi River, the dirty Nairobi River. He started crying just in case God will listen because he was told that God is in heaven and so he loves him and that he knew but why is he so far? Only one time to later come realize when someone was preaching on a crusade that is a small meeting that was happening on the grounds of Dandora uh, in Nairobi city and he expressed how God was a father and how he's not so far but so close to him. And this resonated together with Ricky. It resonated together with how he has been feeling because he was so much in need of a father. He was so much in need of someone he can call his own. But later on, he got a lesson from this because as much as he wanted someone to call his own, his friend told him when they were just talking and having some fun in the rubbish after the meeting that you know what we are here in this rubbish but we will not stay here things one day will change and apart from that I know you want for, to call someone your own but you know what God calls you his own you belong to him you belong to him and as much as he has allowed this tough life for you to be in, not being in school, not having your meals, not knowing where you're going to rest um, your head later on, things will turn out for the good. And so he finishes this particular story at this particular juncture. One time he was sleeping and his friends came and said, Ricky, we love the way that you pray. And we love the way that you express yourself to God with such vigor and amazing way of just how you're going to pray and call God by your own, just as one of his friends has told, had told him. And we would like to always come in and pray together with you. We'd like to, for this, not only for you to just continue praying alone, but we'd love this to be a fellowship. And it was a wow. Like, okay, you guys don't know I don't have a place, eh? You guys don't know uh, anything about me. You just know what is happening at that particular time. But that is what God wanted. At that particular time, God started a fellowship that is on until now, as Ricky expressed it to me, because of him not finding a place to sleep that young men will always come together through his weakness and his uh, ways of just falling away and his experiences in life. He found God used it for good and made it into a fellowship and many trusted in God just because of his experience. Let that be your story. And as we continue to just get to know more of how his life unraveled. I pray this. Do not let the seed grow. Allow God to remove the seed and just use it for his glory. Join me in the next episode as we go through.